Tensions between Russia and the West have reached a dangerous new level, with a key ally of President Vladimir Putin issuing a nuclear threat in response to growing Western support for Ukraine. Vyacheslav Volodin, the Speaker of Russia's lower house of parliament and a member of Putin's Security Council, warned on Thursday that allowing Ukraine to use long-range Western weapons to strike deep inside Russian territory could trigger a nuclear conflict. What the European Parliament is calling for leads to a world war using nuclear weapons. His message was entitled, For those who didn't get it the first time, an apparent reference to a warning by Putin last week that the West would be directly fighting Russia if it let Ukraine fire the long-range missiles onto Russian territory. Volodin's remarks came after the European Parliament voted in favour of urging EU member states to remove restrictions on Ukraine's use of Western-supplied weapons against Russian military targets. He cautioned that such a move would lead to a global war involving nuclear weapons if Ukraine began targeting Russian soil. If something like this happens, Russia will give a tough response using more powerful weapons. No one should have any illusions about this. Volodin specifically referenced Russia's RS-28 Sarmat missile, known in the West as Satan's Aku, which he claimed could hit Strasbourg, home of the European Parliament, in just over three minutes. This warning comes as the war in Ukraine shows no signs of de-escalation, with Russia intensifying airstrikes on Ukrainian cities and infrastructure. On Thursday, Russian forces targeted a geriatric center in the northern city of Sumy, killing at least one person and injuring 12 others. A Russian guided bomb struck a five-story building where elderly patients had to be evacuated and treated on the ground. Rescue workers were still searching for people trapped under the rubble, and President Volodymyr Zelensky condemned the attack in his nightly address, highlighting the ongoing devastation caused by Russia's military campaign. Russia could not have been unaware that this nursing home for the elderly is not a military base, not a military target. In just this one day alone, so far, Russian forces have already used nearly 90 guided aerial bombs targeting our cities and Ukrainian positions. We will definitely respond to the Russian army for this terror, in a tangible manner. Beyond the direct human toll, Ukraine's energy infrastructure has been severely affected by Russia's continued airstrikes. The International Energy Agency warned that Ukraine could face an electricity shortfall of up to one-third of its expected winter demand, with critical power outages already occurring in 10 regions due to the bombings. The Sumy region, which has been frequently targeted, has faced multiple power grid attacks, exacerbating the humanitarian crisis as winter approaches. European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen announced a 160 million euros energy fund to support Ukraine through the winter, largely financed by frozen Russian assets. The fund will focus on repairing damaged energy infrastructure and developing renewable energy to decentralize Ukraine's energy grid, reducing the impact of Russian attacks. And today I can announce that we will make an additional um, uh, amount of close to 160 million euros available for this winter. This includes 60 million euros in humanitarian aid for shelters and heaters, for example. And it includes around 100 million euros for repair works and renewables. And these 100 million euros come from the proceeds of the immobilized Russian assets in the European Union. Because it is only right that Russia pays for the destruction it caused. Ukraine has labeled these strikes on civilian infrastructure as war crimes, and the International Criminal Court has issued arrest warrants for several Russian officials over the destruction of civilian power systems. Moscow, however, maintains that these energy facilities 
are legitimate military targets. Meanwhile, fighting continues on the ground, with Russian forces advancing in eastern Ukraine. Moscow claims to have captured several villages, while Ukraine reports heavy resistance, particularly in the Donetsk region, where the situation remains volatile. As the conflict drags on, the spectre of nuclear escalation looms larger. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg has downplayed Putin's previous red line threats, noting that Russia has often not acted on them and stressed on support Ukraine with more weapons. I do not believe that we can change Putin's mind, but I do believe that we can change his calculus. By giving Ukraine more weapons, we can make Putin realize he cannot get what he wants by force and make it so costly that he will have to accept Ukraine has a sovereign democratic right to persist as a sovereign democratic nation. Stoltenberg emphasized on the crucial relationship between Europe and North America in maintaining global security. We must never take the bond between Europe and North America for granted. NATO is not written in stone. It is a result of deliberate choices and political will. We have heard voices on both sides of the Atlantic calling for America and Europe to part ways. Focusing on short-sighted national interests over longer-term cooperation will not serve us well. Isolationism will not keep anyone safe. However, Kremlin officials have criticized this stance as dangerously provocative. Volodin's latest warning highlights the potential for the Ukraine conflict to spiral into a broader, more catastrophic war.